I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. I'm really happy tonight to, to welcome Joe Bateman. Appreciate you coming and sharing your story with us. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. So, as we usually do, we start out with a little bit of your background and history uh, in life. You were born here in Salt Lake, were you? Yes, sir. Okay, and what? Uh, where did you live? Yeah, I was actually born at uh, Altaview Hospital in Sandy. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I spent most of my life down there. Down That's home. Sandy. Yeah. yeah. Went to Jordan High School, I understand. And yeah. As far as Mormonism, were you baptized at eight and you're in an active family, were you? That's correct, yeah. Oh. Well, was your, your parents, were, were they active? Uh, no. Um, they were actually excommunicated because of me, my, my birth. My dad actually uh, lied to the church that oh. my folks were married when oh. I was conceived. So they were excommunicated, but uh, my father, he did his best to not so much set an example, but raise me as Mormon, to oh. raise me to be a good and faithful Mormon. Yeah. He had a testimony of the church, I'm sure, and yeah. felt like it was true and all. And So did you uh, baptize at 8, I guess, and then became a deacon at 12? And Correct. Were, were you active then as far yeah, I was as baptized. primary and stuff and went to church? Yeah, I was yeah. baptized at 8. Um, that was a really, really big event for my father. Um, in fact, my mother's brother, my uncle, uh, Scott, he baptized me, and I have a uh, Book of Mormon and a Bible in print with my full name and everybody that was a part of it signed it and yeah. uh, you know with love from your loving father I mean it was a really big event because everybody else kind of fell away and I was the one that was you know pursuing and doing the right things I'm supposed to be doing I was ordained a Dinkin and then um, progressed got close to uh, uh, really close with the bishop I changed churches a little bit but. Um, when I was going to be ordained a teacher, that's when everything kind of just really hit home. Because I always kind of questioned, I was always kind of a skeptic, because um, I was just kind of told to believe, you know, you know, believe that Joseph Smith is a prophet, believe that this is the restored gospel. And as a child, especially when I was like eight to 10, I used to pray, you know, like, you know, why can't I be like Joseph Smith? You know, <laughs> God, Jesus Christ, please I reveal think yourself. Feel that similar yeah. sometimes. Yeah, Re reveal yourself to me. You know, I I want to see it too. You know, w why why am I any different than Joseph? Yeah, and uh, that was probably the biggest turning point. Uh, going back to when I was going to be ordained a teacher, I had to sit down with my bishop, as you probably know, yeah. and yeah. To be interviewed for yeah, yeah. worthiness and everything, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And um, kind of went through basic things and asked me what my lifestyle is like, school, and what do you do for fun, and all that sort of thing. And I was honest. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah. And maybe you shouldn't have been, huh? Yeah. All my other peers weren't, and they, they were ordained and moved on, and I didn't really mention anything about them because I was so overwhelmed like you know I, I I should be honest you know I was looking at things I shouldn't be looking at and doing things I shouldn't be doing and at that point when my bishop understood that he he said you know maybe we should we should wait a while 
wow. and, and work together. And that's when I just kind of like, you know, I said, okay, but when I left, I mean, that was it. I just, I didn't care anymore. Wow. I, what's interesting though, is you, you say that your friends that you knew were doing other things too, they were lying to the bishop or not telling him the truth and they were made teachers? Oh yeah. I mean, um, when we were playing church ball, so some of the other guys are a little bit older than me, so they were ordained first. Right. And, uh, you know, we'd be playing church ball, and it'd be like, wow, playing church ball, you know, they're throwing some minor curse words <laughs> under their breath around, and, you know, just little things, you'd be like, you shouldn't be doing that. And, you know, when it comes to partying and, you know, smoking a cigarette or drinking beer or, or looking at girls a certain way, I mean, <laughs> we were all doing it together. So it was just kind of like, but here they were. You know, not. There's something wrong with what you're doing. You shouldn't be doing that, and you shouldn't be progressing when I'm not. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's an interesting part of of trying to live the law too. Is is a, a hypocrisy that comes into play, right? People are. Absolutely. One thing, say one thing, and do another. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a double standard. So did you go to? You went to church ball. Did church ball and other things after this? And uh, no, I, I kind of hung out with the same friends, but yeah. I did not go to church. I had no interest after that point. I just kind of went off the, <laughs> went down a dirt road, and yeah. you know started uh, doing what I was already doing. Well, I was drinking. Well, I was partying. I mean, granted, I was only 14, 15, 16, but unfortunately, kids in junior high school are kind of doing those kind of things, yeah. and even getting involved with girls. Well, it's interesting, as a bishop, I remember, and, and I know this from uh, my 65 years in the church, there are always a number of inactive members in a ward. I mean, it could be upwards of a third to a half of the members don't go to church and don't participate fully. Uh, I, I always had the sense that they knew the church was true and they they probably wished they could be active or keep the commandments or do whatever they needed to. Did you feel that same way? Did you wish that you things were different? Um, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, like I mentioned, I was kind of, you know, do as you're told, not as I do, just do it anyways. Yeah. So I, I, that's the kind of approach I had is I just did it because that was what I was told to do. And then I kind of became rebellious, especially during that, um, you know, when I was going to be ordained a teacher. So right. as far as that goes, um, I, because of the hypocrisy, I just, like I said, I just didn't care. For other people that do, like, oh man, why do I fall short? And you know, why me? And, you know, it's that emotional bondage that the LDS Church kind of creates around itself. And um, yeah, I just didn't care. I just pushed through it. Interesting. It's kind of a mature way of looking at things. What did your dad say? Um, was he disappointed? Yeah, he was extremely disappointed, but at the same time, he had no room to really speak because he wasn't, he didn't set the example. He was already excommunicated because oh, of and he never returned me. Back, yeah. yeah, no, he believes wholeheartedly, and you know, we still talk about it time to time. And I mention things about you know like the great apostasy. You know, if you look at that, you know it it blows <laughs> the doctrine out of the water. I mean, how can you believe something like that? So he still has a hard time with that. He didn't really care. You know, he just wanted me to be a a good man, best man I could possibly be. So yeah. he encouraged me, but. He didn't have much to hold on to. Oh, interesting. So what happens then in these next few years that you're saying you kind of went the way of the world, I guess, a little bit? And Yeah, exactly. Um, I had a girlfriend. We were together for five years from that time period until um, I was 19, actually. We even got married. We moved in. I got our own apartment and stuff, and mm -hmm. I actually uh, got in trouble with the law, and uh, oh. I've couple misdemeanors and things like that. I just, yeah. Uh, yeah, she was bringing marijuana into the apartment and people doing drugs. So saying that I was living in the world is an <laughs> accurate term. I mean, I was doing everything and everything you could think of besides hardcore drugs. Did you feel guilty that you weren't, you, I guess you didn't feel guilty that you weren't active in the church at oh, this no, point? Oh, no, I could care less. I mean, I kind of had an agnostic approach, you know. I believe that, uh, you know, and integrity, honesty, things like that, even though I was hypocritical even with those things, you know, I, yeah. I believe that there were principles, but not this, you know, almighty God and uh, religious concept. Wow. And did you, uh, your wife, was she not an active member or wasn't a member? Yeah, actually my um, ex-wife, she was not a member. Oh. She kind of grew up just, you know, not a part of 
any <laughs> religious or spiritual upbringing by any means. Yeah. So uh, that's probably part of the reason why you kind of connected, you know, or just kind of of the world, you know, you know. You yeah. know you well, do you, do you, from a religious standpoint, do you feel like either God let you down or the church let you down or wasn't fulfilling a need? Or what, what would you say, where were you at at this age? When I was with Ashley and like in our own apartment and things, like I mentioned, I just didn't care. I didn't, I didn't see a purpose or a reason for it. I didn't really feel empty. But as I pushed through it and lived in that lifestyle, I, that's oh. when I finally kind of just stopped to say, you know what, I am kind of hypocritical. You know, I believe in principles, so I just try to live by those principles. So <laughs> that's kind of where I was at with that. And uh, I moved back into my father's place and um, just tried to really gather myself. And uh, um, in between all that time period, there's a point at time where I ended up going to Mountain View Assembly. I talked to my sister Carrie time to time in you know, family gatherings while I was in that relationship. She'd mentioned things to me because my sister Carrie is born again and um, I didn't go going to Mountain View Assembly and um, I met Colin, my brother-in-law's parents, and became more acquainted, acquainted with them and at Mountain View Assembly. And that's when they uh, tried talking to me helping me out with uh, they knew my you Mormon, Mormon background. They yeah. knew you were Mormon. I didn't care, but at the same time, I appreciated their input. I was just amazed. Like, you know, they're just, you know, they give me a Bible with Joey on it, and they give me a Book of Mormon with these tabs on it of the contradictions that the, the Book of Mormon has with the Bible. <laughs> I just kind of took it for what it was. You know, I went through it, you know, where like in um, Doctrine and Covenants, where it talks about God has a body of flesh and bone yeah. as well. And, you know, and he progressed. And uh, kind of the insinuation that we can learn and do the same thing. Right. And then reading the Bible and knowing that he, God is the Alpha and he's the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. It's like, well, that has contradicting. Kind of okay, I put it back on the shelf and just kind of go back to that lifestyle with uh, Ashley. And then, yeah. like I mentioned, uh, she <laughs> come back home and all that. So in that whole time period, I kind of went back and forth. I'd read, try to find something new. I'd find something like, wow, that, that makes sense. And then I just go back. So yeah. it's kind of always been progressive. Did you think God loved you at any point during this, these few years here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, did you have a sense that there was a God and that He cared about where you were at and what you were doing? Yeah, it, re it really hit home in uh, 2010. That's when I uh, was really focused on principles. That's when I took more time with that Bible the new international version that uh, Colin's parents gave me and really started going through each tab and, and um, kind of going back to the way I was when I was a kid, praying and asking for guidance. And uh, there was an occasion at Mountain View Assembly where I just put my hands in the air. I didn't really, I didn't mean to do it. It just kind of happened naturally. And uh, I, I just, I didn't completely believe, but I knew and it just felt right. And I had more knowledge. I was more aware intellectually. And I, I just asked God, please come into my life and you know, guide me, you know, I, uh, I'm lost, just just help me. Yeah. And that's when it just kind of, everything started like a, like a sc sculpture, you know, you start cutting away the unessential, yeah. the unessential started just falling off. And um, as I started just paying attention to what I'm watching and what I'm doing and um, stopped going to the club so much and I ended up, uh, meeting Lindsay, my, my current wife. We actually met online. Oh. And um, she was in community college uh, studying musical theater. And um, I didn't realize she was actually from Utah until she uh, came out and told me. And she tells me that she lives in Sandy. I was like, oh, that's so weird. Because, you, you know, I live below the Outview Hospital. Yeah. Come to find out, she literally lives like two miles away. At the time, she's at Wyoming Community College, and when I first saw her picture, I thought, man, that's an intelligent, you know, she's smart, she's in college, she's beautiful, you know, that's the kind of woman I need in my life. And when she said, uh, you know, she's Christian, and um, asked me if I'd be willing to read the Bible and pray with her over the phone and things, you know, I thought, wow, this is, this is really good, you know, hmm. I, this is what I need. Yeah. You know, maybe this is where God is guiding me, because I'd have those moments where I'd just kind of stop and, you know, it was my 
doing the right thing? Am I going in the right direction? Yeah, help me, help yeah. me, God. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, along the journey, I definitely had those moments where, like Lindsay and our conversations and praying together and talking, it's like, wow, this this is real. You know, it's been revealed to me that you know this is where I need to go. And then reading the Bible and digging into it, it's like, wow. I start seeing more of the contradictions of uh, the Book of Mormon and the, the LDS faith. And that's when uh, I finally realized it's more than just asking God to come into your life that one moment like I did at Mountain View Assembly. I mean, that was a profound moment in my life when I did that, but as my progression, my journey continues, I realized how much more important it is as a Christian to basically do that daily. Yeah. Basically ask God, guide me, help me, you know? He even says in the Bible, pick up your cross daily and walk with me. So I, <laughs> I get a little bold-headed sometimes when I'm thinking, you know, because I, I still make mistakes, but I still ask for help every day. And I think a lot of Christians, they, they forget that. They, they put themselves in a position and like, yes, I'm saved, but then they don't do anything. They don't, I, I was just it. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm at. Wow. So, I mean, as as a Mormon, did you have any sense of Jesus and uh, in your life? Up, I guess up through 14, at least. Uh, um, now looking back, I like to say yes, because I feel like the whole way, even though I didn't let him in when yeah. I was doing things I was doing, you know, he was knocking on the door, trying to let me know, you know, knocking on my heart, let me know you shouldn't be doing that, you know. When I had those moments of fear and trembling and not where I'm at, I feel like he was there. Yeah. But at that point in time, I just felt, you know, lost. Mm. wasn't quite sure. Yeah. Well, I know some of this will be probably attributed to youth and all, but is your, you, you, did you ever have a sense after 18, 19, 20, and you were coming around a little bit, I guess more so with the, with the Bible and so on, and I guess you were given this Book of Mormon with the contradictions. Did the church ever, the LDS church ever seem like maybe it was the right thing to do, to go back to? You know, I, be honest with you, I still kind of struggle with that as far as the community, because the it's kind of like I- The social aspect. Oh yeah, because they're so well structured. Yeah. And the community is so strong, it's, it is appealing. You know, I, I go to Calvary Chapel, Salt Lake, and I love Pastor Terry, what he teaches and things, but I see so many Christians that proclaim to be saved, but they don't pick up their cross daily. So there's, um, it's less organized. Um, people are kind of battling against each other. And that's why the LDS Church becomes kind of appealing in that yeah. sense, just organization. It's hard for some to give that up. Yeah, exactly. It? But doctrinally, that's what keeps me away of saying, you know, you know intellectually and through reason, just by looking at the Book of Mormon and the Bible, that there's contradictions. Yeah. So I consciously refer to the Bible, you know, um, when Jesus is talking to Peter upon this rock, I'll build my church. I, ref I refer to that often in my mind and in the, in the Bible to remind myself that is the pivotal point in Jesus' life that obliterates the Book of Mormon <laughs> because the whole idea of Joseph's vision and everything is based off of a great apostasy that we fell away from the principles. Right. And that one verse lets us know that it's never been gone. Yeah, My verse in that regard was uh, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there also, you know, and, and there never was a time when there weren't at least two or three gathered together in Jesus' name, you know, so it, it, the apostasy and for other scriptures that, that don't really support an apostasy. So you've taken a different look at the Bible now for sure, right? Oh, absolutely. And uh, do you like the NIV version? The, you know what? The, I, I do like that. I've been really turned on to the uh, New King James Version. I've been using a John Maxwell uh, Bible, uh, New King James Version, because it, um, Pastor Terry at Calvary Chapel, he uses New King, G New King James Version. Oh, so okay. I can use my Bible to follow him and use the same, hear and read the same words. At the same time, that specific Bible that I've been using um, goes into the background and the history and has yeah. some things that you can apply in 
you know, real life for yourself yeah. in the same way the apostles did and people of the Bible did. Now, what do you think about uh, grace and works? Have you, I guess you've studied that a little bit now. How do you compare that with between Mormonism <laughs> and Christianity? Yeah, I had a really big problem with that, you know, trying to in intellectually and reasonably um, come to a conclusion. And um, as a Mormon, it's such a double standard, hypocrisy, you know, they, I felt like you just do it just because you're told to, because that's basically what I was told to do. But I feel a lot of people that have done it, they, they feel that emptiness because all it is is worse. There's no true Jesus behind it. There's no true inside passion or motive to do it. Well, you mentioned hypocrisy, and there's a lot of judging that goes on with it, a lot of pride. Oh, yeah, that absolutely. Goes with. You, know, you just got to do it. It's just the right thing to do. Yeah. It's like, well, why? Yeah. You know what I mean? Now when I stop and look at, at it with what I've learned from reading Josh, uh, Josh McDowell, A uh, Case for Christianity, and really digging in to understand what it means to do works. I mean, now I feel like I'm on a mission every day. <laughs> you know, it, I don't have to the, proclaim Jesus outright. I do right. at certain points, but even in my actions and the little things I do, you know, I'm supposed to be showing yeah. you know, God's grace. Not to earn your way to heaven, yeah. but because of, of grace. Yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. just a byproduct of you and what you do. Jesus works. God works through you. I didn't understand that as a Mormon, that the gift of gr the grace was a free gift and that you couldn't have works and grace at the same time. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're, they're totally opposite or not opposite, but they don't, they just can't be together at the same place at the same time. Yeah. Did you ever sense that? Oh, absolutely, because that's the sense a lot of um, Mormon missionaries put it. Uh, I mean, I went to church part of my life in um, uh, North Salt Lake. I grew up part of my life with my mom in um, North Salt Lake, Eaglewood, Henry Eyring. He uh, was in your ward? In my ward. I mean, I went to school with his son. So you met him? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I was well acquainted with his son. I went to church uh, with his father. and. You know, I was a part of that community and just that sense of, you know, you got to do the works and then the grace will come. Yeah. I mean, that's the impression it gives, yeah. you know, just, just do it anyways. Right. It's like, no, it's supposed to start with within and come outwards. Be, I born, mean, be born again. Intellectually and trying to reason through it as, you know, what we do in every other area of life, education and everything yeah. else. It just didn't make sense. A little critical thinking. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So did you, uh, when you went to this mountain assembly the first time, what did you think of the Christian uh, experience the first time you went? <laughs> well, um, I was nervous. I was astounded, you know, it was a different concept. So different than, yeah. Oh yeah, they had a rock band and things going on. I was like, wow, this is very, you know, I thought that was, crazy evangelism when I saw it, but yeah. I've learned other ways. There's even more evangelism that's a little like, whoa, that's a little different. But, you know, we're all, we're all the same. We're all right. after to learn and grow in Christ. And to praise Christ, right? Praise yeah. God. But my, uh, yeah, my first experience was, wow, this is, this is different, but um, okay. Let's, let's, you know, I, I was interested. Show me what they I've always had a mentality, I'll try anything once. It's <laughs> kind of hurt me, but at the same time, it's helped me with my journey to understand right. and to grow. Yeah. What do you think the Mormons most misunderstand about Christians? Do Christians have values and youth programs and take care of their children and concern about marriages and all that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think the biggest misconception with Mormons is they, they feel Obviously, number one, they feel they, they have the restore gospel. So they feel they have the complete principles and the complete way of life into eternal life. They think we believe in the same God and the same principles and the same things, but in all reality, we believe in a completely different Jesus. We yeah. believe in completely different theology on the most basic fundamental levels. And um, I just from my personal experience and journey, for any Mormons out there, I would challenge them to uh, challenge Joseph Smith's vision. You know, was there really a great apostasy? You know, was this, yeah. what makes you different from him? 
take an intellectual approach and reason kind of like a, a, a lawyer would and sit both on the table and see how it aligns. You've run into this, I'm sure, but you realize Mormons are very reluctant to do that. Oh, yeah, because it's uh, a feeling. You know, just pray that it'll be revealed to you. And then if you don't get an answer, it's your fault, and you need to pray harder, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's going back to those values and things. It's completely different when they think it's the same. And um, with being a Christian, it starts with me. It starts at home with my relationship with God, and that influences my whole family and my community. And it's through God's grace that we are allowed to fulfill yeah. God's will in our life. Nothing Mormons, between you and God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I have a direct line to God. With the Mormon community, they, you know, they have to go to the bishop. You know, they don't have, they, a lot of them don't believe they have a direct line to God. You know? No, they actually are stuck between the bishop, the stake president, and the church itself. Yeah. Uh, it, it even comes up in the temple uh, about us giving everything we have to the building up of the church, basically, uh, rather than uh, uh, giving that to Christ. It's, it's a total different concept. And, you know. Yeah. And one thing I would, um, I don't want to butcher the name, but the, in the original Greek, I want to say it's Ecclesius. I'm not sure, but yeah. the original word for, for church. church just that alone redefines everything because okay. that word literally means you and I, us, the people, we're the church. We're the body of Christ. Yeah, we're the body of Christ. It has nothing to do with about a yeah. specific building. Yeah. In fact, it says that God does not dwell in, in temples made with hands. <laughs> yeah, it? exactly. Yeah. That's kind of a tough, tough one for the Mormons to accept that. Well, Joe, I appreciate it. We've only got just a 30 or 40 seconds left. Anything you'd care to share with the, to the LDS people? Reason. Study. Study like know a lawyer. Know the history like a of the LDS would. church. Yeah. Study it and know what you believe and why you believe it. You know, we all want a passion yeah. and lead a life of greatness in yeah. some shape or form. And the church is it. trying to provide some new information, but I think some of, some of the members of the church aren't even aware of it. They're not even able to study those kinds of things. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate yeah. you coming and sharing your story with us. And uh, you brought up some interesting things. I hope people will think. Because there are a lot of people that have fit into your category. And so we appreciate you watching tonight. And we'll see you next week. Good night.